All right. For the past uh, couple of weeks, we have been looking at the life uh, that uh, and the events that surrounded the life of Samson. Last week, from Judges chapter fourteen verses five to seven, we looked at the beginning of backsliding. Uh, all believers uh, tend to now and then get into complacency, laxity, and uh, often it uh, leads us to backsliding, which means going away or in a way trying to switch sides. moving away from being loyal to the lord jesus christ who died for us who gave us his life and moving towards uh uh you know uh joining in a way the value system in the kingdom of satan the enemy last week we looked at uh, three uh, verses and we looked at how this backsliding begins this week we are going to look at the part 2 of the same thing and that, for that we will read verses 8 to 9 After some days, this is Samson. He returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass, or the you know dead body of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. He scraped it out into his hands and went on eating as he went. And he came to his father and mother and gave some to them, and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey from the carcass of the lion. Now, obviously, uh, a lot of a lot of scripture in the book of Judges is devoted to the life events of the uh, of Samson. Now, this is the first episode of Samson's life. We saw a few weeks ago how Samson was beginning to cross over the hedges, the fence God has put for the people of God. He goes down to the territory of the enemies, which is the Philistine area, and he wanders and he likes a girl, and he comes back and places this proposal before his parents, saying, "I like this lady, and I want to marry her." Fathers persuade for the father persuades him, saying, "No, that is not right for you because she has been somebody who has pro- been prohibited for you." as a believer from god by god but samson persuades them and he says no this is what is right for me and he goes on to take his parents to this place now this the narrative tells us that in this part of part of samson's life at this phase in samson's life samson was uh, going to get married to this woman and last week we looked at how he was going through the vineyards of timna a place that has been prohibited for him and we saw very clearly last week that uh, for a uh, for a man who has been made who made a nazarite vow it is not right for him to hang out at a place which is dangerous for him where vineyards were there wine was there and and such a time we see that a young lion came roaring at him charging at him and we see that probably should have served as a reminder or as a warning for samson to turn away from the way or from the pleasure that he is pursuing however samson paid no heed and when the young lion came charging at him the scriptures tell us that the spirit of god came rushing upon him to deliver him in his mercy grace and loving care and provision however samson did not care about it and then he goes on to see this lady and he likes her now this is after that episode which means when the scriptures tell us in verse 8 after some days a good number of days have lapsed so this week we will look at how from the scripture we can learn backsliding continues in the lives of believers as i was meditating and as i, as I was preparing and my heart was pricked to my conscience was was caught guilty in a few areas as to how when habits that are ungodly when pleasures that are ungodly when some of the patterns that we see in our lives that are ungodly when we leave them unmonitored unchecked or when we leave them untamed and when we do not repent those things can become addictions and they can make us backslide and turn away from the lord to the extent that god has to mercifully discipline us to a great extent to bring us back so here we see after some days he returned to take her obviously who is this piece of scripture speaking about about the lady that he fell in love with the woman that he fell in love with now what is interesting is this Here is Samson, who was saved from the jaws of lion. The spirit of God came and delivered him. However, Samson did not learn his lesson, and the very body, the dead carcass, the 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 body that was lying down, you know, in one of those fields at that place where Samson himself killed by the spirit cell, is now become a honey trap. 
Now, the first thing I want to share with you as we look at this I look at this passage is this. You know, if you and I choose to cross the boundaries God has placed for us. Now, this is for believers. For an unbeliever, there are no boundaries because he is spiritually a dead person. Morally, he may choose some values and he may barter a few for other. But however, spiritually, he is a dead person. Only once a person is convicted by the gospel message through the work of the Holy Spirit, that he is sinful by birth and by choices, that the Lord Jesus came as a substitute to die in his place, and only in the completed atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he hung on the cross, when he shed his blood, when he rose back on the third day, only in that work can that person receive the gift of forgiveness, the gift of eternal life, and the assurance of life beyond this world. Only that person can be God shall only to that person this thing applies. But if a person is not born again, these things will not apply to him. So the scriptures tell us very clearly that Samson, when he began to move one fence after the other fence, when he began to cross one hedge over the other hedge where God has placed, he said no to his parental authority. He went and liked somebody that God prohibited him from liking. Every time he moves a hedge, he's Looks like he's getting his way. Looks like he's getting his things done. Looks like he's going to achieve what he intends to achieve. Very soon we will realize that this is only going to spiral down until he's brought to a place where once his physical vision, his sight is removed, that is when spiritually he's enlightened to see, I made a mistake. I need God. I was wrong all along the path. Now, here is this episode that is a very remarkable thing. But God even chose, the Spirit of God even chose to put this piece of scripture for us, uh, of Samson's life in the Holy Bible for us. So let's see what is happening after some days. After some days, probably, probably means a few months, even six to 12 months. Now, why would I say that? Now, if you re re read the customs uh, of the times of Samson, generally a betrothal and wedding, you know, took time, which means once a person likes, a, a, once a man likes a woman, he goes with his parents to talk, meet the parents of the bride, uh, of the would-be uh, bride. And then once they have a formal ceremony, they begin to have a season of betrothal, similar to what we call an engagement in our land. And then once the engagement happens, six to 12 months, the late, the woman, the bride lives in his own, in her own house with the parents and the man goes back to live with the parents. And probably that's when the time he begins to get life prepared for himself and his future partner. Now, during this season, occasionally they may meet, but otherwise they are going to be living separate lives. Until after the end of this six to 12 months, close to a year, when once the time is right for them, according to the agreed time, the groom comes with his parents, with his family, or they are invited. And that's when uh, there's a feast thrown. And then after, at the end of the feast, that is when they get married and the wedding is consummated. The marriage is consummated. So probably this episode is ri not right after you know, uh, uh, the death of uh, the killing of the lion. So after some days, he returned to take her. So probably that is why we know that probably because of the six to 12 months time, time was given for the honeybees to come in and build their honeycomb and net honey was gathered there. So the body of the lion died that became dry and the honey, but the swarm of bees came and they began to build their honeycomb there. Now, why is this important for us? So during the six months to one year time, Samson probably had ample of time to at least reflect on this major episode. Now from the Holy Bible, we are told that this is the first recorded incident of the spirit's power rescuing Samson, albeit through Samson that the, uh, the, that, uh, the, uh, the lion was killed. Samson had enough time to reflect on this. Now, brothers and sisters, God takes us through episodes in life, through maybe sometimes a family issue, sometimes a personal issue, sometimes a breakthrough, sometimes a danger that God brings you out of in order for us to help us reflect, to think on certain matters, to see whether our lives are in alignment to God's word and God's purposes or not. And if you remember, we're going to look at it in a short while from now, Samson's life had a very definite calling, a definite purpose. And Samson ignored all of that. 
And now, very soon, this is going to become a honey trap for Samson. So after some days when he came and he returned to take this woman that he liked, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. So probably he remembered the place and that's what the scripture tells us. He turned aside and he saw, he knew exactly where this episode happened, though it probably was after a few months. He knew where that incident happened. He looked at that place and he found the dead body of this animal and and then he also found something interesting there. He not only found the dead body of the animal, he found a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey too. He remembered the episode, but he didn't give enough time to think about something that is very important. I'm going to pause here. I want you to please quickly turn to a specific scripture portion. Please turn to Proverbs chapter 16. Let me just find it. I, I, I should have put it here. I didn't put it here. Proverbs, one, just give me one minute. I, I'm going to uh, point you to that scripture verse. Please turn to Proverbs chapter one is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 8. The other one is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 5. If somebody is there, I'd like you to, I, I kindly request you to read it for me. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15, and Proverbs chapter 14, verse 8 as well. Pallavi, uh, or anybody, if you're there, you kindly read this for me. Proverbs chapter 15. No, 14 verse, verses uh, 15. Verse 8 huh? and verse 15, both. First read verse 8 and then verse 15, brother. The verse 8 says, uh, the wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way, but the folly of fools is deceiving. You see, the foolishness of a fool is deceiving. He does not. But what, does a, what does the wise man do? Read the first part again, uh, Nitin. The wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way. Yes, the, the prudent man, a prudent man is somebody who sees danger and he hides. That's what the Holy uh, Book of Proverbs says in another place. A prudent man sees danger and he hides. That means he takes steps of actions to not do the same thing again. But, and also the prudent of the, the wise man is a prudent man. And what does he do? He discerns his ways. Is that what it says? Discerning his ways? Yes, sir. Discern his way. Yeah. Now the question is, how does a prudent man discern his way? The answer is given there in verse 15. Can you read verse 15 also? The simple, the simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. That is how he discerns his ways. The prudent man, how does he discern? Because he thinks about the way. He thinks about the way. The brothers and sisters, I want to ask you something. Most of you are young people, young men and young women. Have you ever asked yourself this fundamental question? That is, if I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, what is the single governing authority for my life? What is the one rule by which I live my entire life? The answer is the Holy Bible. If that is the answer, have you ever asked yourself this second fundamental question? As a man, as a woman, how should I live my life? The answer is in the Holy Bible. But have you ever given thought to your steps? Who is defining life for you? Who is defining lifestyle for you? As a man, as a woman, the Holy Bible very clearly tells us. You go and read the pastoral epistles, 1 Timothy, Titus, very clear instructions. You go and read the book of Proverbs, a father, a mother's instruction to his own children about how a man should be, how a woman should be. Read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 down. How, what, what does it mean that as a man you're created in the image of God, as a woman you're created in the image of God? Albeit by sin, you are, you, your life and my life have been enslaved by Satan and sin. Now that you are redeemed, now that you are born again, now that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, under the authority of the scripture, how should your life be defined? How should your time be spent? What is pleasure to you? What is evil to you? What is righteousness to you? How, why should you earn? How should you earn? And for what purpose is earning all about? What is life? What is love? What is sex? What is marriage? Have you ever given thought to these things? The Holy Bible tells us, brothers and sisters, that a prudent man discerns his way. How? By giving thought to his steps. Ask yourself this the single most important question, all of Christian life boils down to this. That is, the life that I am living right now, am I living according to the word of God? That's all it takes. You cannot work in a company and do what you want to do. 
you have been assigned to fill in a particular position you have a particular profile you have a specific task you have a target to achieve now that illustration can only serve to help you understand that okay there's a specific goal but they don't care about your character they don't care what kind of moral character you have as long as the job is getting done but the scriptures tell us that you have a specific calling specific way to live life and here is samson who serves to each one of us as a deadly deadly warning not to cross the hedges god has placed for us remembers the place remembers the episode and the power of god that came down to help him rescue him and preserve him yet did not that's the point did not give thought to his steps he kept walking down the same path to and fro to and fro just because god delivers you from some sin does not mean your brothers and sisters you should leave your god or you should drop your god down he turned aside he remembers the place well but forgot the warning behold there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey that means a good number of days have passed by that's the point it takes time for the bees to come and build the honeycomb and we also told that we are also told according to the narrative that probably this was the time he was going to get married to the woman which means according to their custom it was a good number of 6 months anywhere between 6 months to 1 year and brothers and sisters this can happen you might be thinking that all is well so did david until the baby was born with bachiba 9 months he had no conscious stricken whatsoever in between what did he do he almost broke all the 10 commandments all the 10 commandments almost he did committed adultery he lied he committed murder and he did everything possible he could 9 months and he thought nothing was wrong with him it can happen so do yourself a favor each week each day introspect and see so the best way is this follow instruction then you will know when you need correction if you don't heed to instruction which means what does the holy bible say about a born again person young man should live like a young woman should live like if you don't know what the instruction is how will you ever receive correction that's the point there's always a honey trap brothers and sisters if you cross the hedge god has kept for you there's always a honey trap in fact if there's no honey trap beyond the commandments and the you know loving boundaries god has placed for our lives as believers you won't be tempted the temptation was in the fact that god does not want you to be like him genesis chapter 3 on the day you eat of it you shall not die but you shall surely become like that's the honey trap and it looks like that is going to really be tasty and satisfying to you but you know it's going to ultimately sting you so backsliding happens and backsliding continues to happen when you cross the hedge and you are giving into the idea that there's a honey trap there second thing now what followed the eating of the honey was remarkable really number one after he ate the honey he number one broke the nazarite vow because according to numbers chapter 6 he is not supposed to touch a dead thing of course there in numbers chapter 6 was four down to 21 if you look at the rules and laws god has kept for a nazarite who is consecrated himself to be a set apart man for god's purposes it does not specifically mention about the the dead body of an animal it specifically speaks about the dead body of a human being but when you read the narrative it gives us enough clues to believe that probably this was a breaking of the law this was violating the law of god as a nazarite because the scriptures tell us in the next verse that he hid this matter from his parents what is so so secretive about this that he had to hide it from his parents so what followed the eating of the honey is remarkable number 1 he broke he broke the nazarite vow number 2 he hid it from his parents but he offered the honey number 3 following this honey eating episode he gets he goes to get married to his future partner which never happens however he flippantly uses this episode as a riddle challenge and he becomes aggressively angry because he lost he loses his riddle challenge now many more things follow this becomes the path for samson's 
backsliding and going down a path where he will ultimately lose his own life albeit god in his mercy preserved his soul so dear brothers and sisters remember the first thing is this when you as a believer cross the hedge and the boundary and the fence god has kept for you backsliding will not stop unless you give thought to your ways unless you repent unless you ask god for mercy and 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 forgiveness is going to go down a dangerous path there is a way that seems right unto a man but the end is death there is a way that seems right unto a man but god weighs the motives of the heart second thing what happens when backsliding begins you begin to allow pleasure to determine life so you're going to lose the purpose god has for you when pleasures determine life when pleasures define life you will lose the purpose of life you see eating is good but eating will not should not become the purpose of your life you eat so that you may live you don't make it in your life that's going to be self defeating and in samson's life especially in this episode we see a pattern that is beginning to emerge samson allows pleasures to define life for him pleasures to determine the course of his path what was the pleasure here we will see that he scraped it out into his hands he took the honey he scooped it into his hands he went on while he began to enjoy this and then he goes to his parents father and mother and he gives them but he does and they ate and he does not tell them where he is got this honey from where is got the honey from he hides the fact that he got this honey from a dead animal so understand this Number one, he began to wander in the Philistine territory, which was dangerous for him. Number two, he went after a Philistine woman, where God clearly prohibited. Number three, he ignored the warning of the lion episode. God graciously saved him. Number four, he now eats what God has forbidden from him for him from the law. You see, once you cross one commandment that God has for you, and you begin to step out of God's commandments and god's mercy and grace and kindness towards you you will very soon justify all the other breaking of the law because you will now have the courage to do what you want to do by yourself because you have justified already in your mind what god has prohibited see basically he went into a place god prohibited him to go he went after a person god prohibited him to go now he's going after a pleasure where god said no now what happens very soon this pleasure of going after this woman becomes the ruling desire of his life because of which he ignores god's warnings and god's instruction and that's the path to lose the purpose of your life so i ask you this question do you remember what is the purpose of the life of every believer romans chapter 1 verse 6 we are called to belong to jesus christ to become like jesus that's the purpose romans chapter 1 verse 6 that's the purpose of every single believer irrespective of age irrespective of what phase of life you are in your calling is to belong to him to draw closer to him to become like him to be transformed as a young man as a young woman as a husband as a father as a mother as a wife as a son daughter brother whatever as a corporate employee your job my brothers and sisters your calling is to belong to christ what just like samson's calling was because he was a nazarite set apart and set apart from the world set apart for god samson basically allowed pleasures to define and determine life for him he lost the purpose of his life so this is how basically backsliding continues to grow samson had a very definite calling he had a very definite anointing but he began to pursue mirages you know what a mirage is when you are traveling on a hot summer day on a highway where you know from you and especially if you are thirsty you will anyways begin to see a mirage a place that looks like some water is available there Uh, the closer you get to it the farther it goes it never satisfies you and in samson's life the pleasure for pleasure never was satisfied and he lost it all god in his grace and mercy still used him and brought about so much so that his name occurs in the book of hebrews samson was a man who 
ignored the definite calling and the anointing that he had upon his life and pursued mirages you and i have a definite calling to belong to christ and you and i have a special definite anointing 1 john chapter 2 the spirit of god living in us to instruct us and teach us from the holy scripture but if we begin to turn away ignore god's instruction remove one fence after the other cross one boundary after the other brothers and sisters you are closer to danger than you were before you removed the hedge and the last thing backsliding continues when you and i downplay the spiritual authorities god places in our lives it is hazardous to our own soul you know parents are your spiritual authority till you get married once you get married if you are a man you are the spiritual authority over your wife but you still have a spiritual authority over your life that is your local church and the pastor god has placed or pastors god has placed these authorities are placed by god conscience parents local church even in the public sector the government romans chapter 13 tells us these are authorities placed by god the word of god is the ultimate authority that defines what authority is and how you ought to conduct yourself but samson you see this pattern in samson's life he tells his parents that he liked a girl in the philistine territory but he hides from his parents that a young lion came charging at him when they were about to go after this you know prospect to proposal he gives his parents the honey that came from the dead car the carcass of a lion but he refuses to tell them where it came from you see he is his constant downplay of spiritual authorities what he prefers he chooses to tell what he chooses to tell he prefers to tell what he does not want to he hides it that's a dangerous game anybody can play ask yourself this question who is the spiritual authority the god placed in your life that you are willingly and joyfully submitting to you know who refuses authority only one person satan that's why in its core essence sin is rebellion you choose to turn away from god placed authority what happens all that you think is right is nothing but unrighteousness and you will fight for it and you will justify those rights too so he downplayed the spiritual authorities in his life and what has happened it has become hazardous to his own soul he did not tell his father and mother he gave some to them he ate he didn't tell them they ate he didn't tell them where it came from that it came from the body sorry from the dead carcass before I, i i complete the last point is it okay if i please with you to rejoin because just have one minute and it will log out could you guys please rejoin again hello sure anna sure sure yeah please